What's up? You're off in God's country with Reed and Dan Isbell, also known as the Brothers Hunt, where we take a weekly drive to the intersection of country music and the outdoors. Two things that go together like Mexico and tequila. Or two things that go together like cowboys and angels. Produced by Meat Eater and iHeart Podcast. So hop on up and ride shotgun with us as we take the back roads with some of today's biggest stars and creators of the songs you know and love. We're going to sit down with uh, Dustin Lynch today, a fellow Tennessean. Yep. Tullahoma. Ten gold, platinum, and multi-platinum certified singles. Yeah, been, had nine number ones, something like that. Um, yeah. He's... Land manager. He's got a farm. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about him as an outdoorsman. He loves to hunt, loves to fish. I was literally going to say that. That's we're, that's what we're going to talk. That's about. what we're going to talk about. So how y'all hang with us? Thanks for hanging out with us, and God's country. Dude, it feels like we're all feeling good this morning. I'm, feeling we're, great. We're feeling good. Yeah, yeah, we're feeling tired. We got some coffee. Do you guys? Um, it, is this your like, podcast? I'm with it. Though, but go for it. <laughs> no, well, you just mentioned coffee, and, and Dan grabbed his, and I, it was just, it was just like, do you have to throttle your coffee intake every morning like me? Yeah, right I feel now. Like, I feel like, I don't know, I'm, right now. I switch up bags of beans so they react differently. And so every now and again, you're like, man, I've had too much. I've had too much. I feel like I'm dialed in, though. Dude, yesterday. I was worried about being Reed too was jittery for a yesterday. podcast. I got, I, okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I was just saying I was worried about being too jittery for a podcast. And uh, I think, I'm, I, think I nailed cup, my, my mix today. What cup is that? This you? is uh, two. Okay. And how do you do it? Are you a pour over guy? Or are you like a... Uh, uh, what are those things called? The I, I've just got, Keurig, Keurig guy. I, yeah, I've just got a regular coffee pot. Okay, house. yeah, I like yeah, that about you. Yeah, I do too. I like that old about school. You. Yeah. yeah, I'm with that. <laughs> Waffle House, pour it up, dude. Um, I got jittery yesterday because because we, I mean, we we got back at like one o'clock from that duck hunt. I had a cup of coffee at the house and then got here. I, was, I smashed a couple of coffees here. I feel got like to Sony. I feel like jumps feels. Like this, this some bitch is on the. I can't hardly even. <laughs> I appreciate the juice. I you got, got this, plenty, man. I, I got, got plenty. <laughs> yeah, don't move that too fast, dude. Uh, I got to Sony yesterday before our co-write. Drank another one, and dude, I got in the I got in the room sitting there, and Dan and him are talking, and like, I don't like I I don't drink enough coffee to do that, but I got weird. I got <laughs> weird. For, I was like, bro, what is that? Like, I had to sit down, like, take a couple deep breaths, yeah, you know, drink a water. Yeah. You need to walk outside, and, like, drink a bottle of water. Yeah, I was, I was. Uh, I think it's I a sign of, of getting old. Is uh, you enjoy like coffee is my favorite I'm with that. time of day. I'm with that, straight, is it straight? Favorite black? time, but of I, day. I don't have. I mean, you guys have kids running around. I'm sure in yeah. the morning. I don't. So yeah. I'm just like a peaceful. Yeah, black, straight black. Yeah, just a peaceful like get oh, to catch up on emails. Zero and, peace. There's zero peace. Yeah. It, you got to to have peace at our house. We have peace. We put our kids down at seven. We don't even talk for. This is my wife, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, just not my roommates. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we don't talk for about an hour and a half. We yeah. just kind of chill, and then you know we start converse, conversing after an hour and a half of, of silence. But you got to get up at five o'clock if you're going to have any peace at all. Yeah. It, at seven, Ooh. it's Mama, Sorry. Dada, Bluey. Wait, let's go back to the coffee beans thing. You said you mix them up, yeah, like like flavor wise from different well, different. Yeah, as much as I travel, like come across a coffee shop and you're like, oh, let's try these from wherever. What's your yeah. favorite? What's your favorite? Because I want like I would say honestly, what I'm having right now. I had a buddy that went on a mission trip. Uh, he does it every year down to Guatemala. It's awesome, and um, they're like super small batch um, coffee farms down there. And he he gifted me, uh, just surprised me with it with a. A package and it had a bag of uh the beans from the farm he was there helping Sick. out and uh his favorite cigar that he came across down cool. there and then uh, a bottle of wine and he was like three of my favorite things this goes good with you know whatever in the morning this goes good with uh Dang, that's hey, like that's a good friend what a cool yeah, gift, man. Pretty cool gift. Yeah, yeah what a cool and, gift um, and so, yeah so that's what i'm drinking right now yeah it's dang good that's he's awesome. not lying yeah that's awesome so you from Tullahoma? From Tullahoma, Tennessee, yeah. Man, that ain't far, is it? <sighs> no, it's not. It's not far at all. I mean, we, you know, but growing up, we wouldn't really ever get up here. We'd come up here for, uh, you know, cr Christmas shopping. Yeah, sometimes. Same. Then, we did the same thing. Did you come to Opryland? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We used to do that. We're from West. And then, so. like, you know, the mom would come up here and get a mammogram or whatever. Yeah. I'd ride with her. And <laughs> go that. to Toys R Us. You all, yeah. The, <laughs> the, the, the big doctor appointments were always in Nashville. Yeah. It's yeah. like you to go yeah. load the kids, load the kids up, the and you make a day of it. Yeah. 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 But I remember when Opryland was. Where the mall is, like the theme park. The theme park, yeah. yeah. I actually went by there yesterday. I got to my right, and I'm like, I'm gonna go to Bass Pratt and been a while. And it, it hit me. I'm like, wow, 
because I hated it when they whenever they shut down the theme park. Yeah, I was, for I was a mad. mall like we've got plenty of malls. What are y'all same, doing? Dude, but yesterday at you know three p.m. There's a thousand cars in the parking lot shop. Was there? Like somebody knew what they were doing. So people are still <laughs> going to malls. Oh man, that place is packed. I figured it was Amazon Central. Now I figured that all those guys were hurting, but yeah. I guess not. I mean, can you do that? Can you rock around town and and not get like too bothered? Yeah, yeah. I think you know, beauty of like the cowboy hat. Yeah, um, oh yeah. You know, I, I still uh, were you on social media? I think you're around. You know, I'm seen in ball cap most of the time uh, on social media, but yeah, I, I still think you know, just from years of people thinking I'm always in a cowboy hat, I can move. Man, around I'm not. Good. I'm I'm in that. The dynamic because because I I was oh, kind of yeah, hoping so famous, you get mauled. At I'm not even talking about that. Bro. Saying, I'm yeah. saying I was kind of hoping you were going to be in a cowboy hat today because it would been the first cowboy hat in here. Oh really? You know, yeah, we hadn't had a cowboy hat. You in here, me. But, no, dude, right. it's, it's all good, dude. Do I, you, I like do that. Do you would just reg, like occasionally be like I'll throw it on today and wear a cowboy hat during the day? Not usually, no. <laughs> it, it just doesn't like for what I do. It doesn't make sense. Like, um, yeah. If I'm if I'm home usually and, and I have the day off, I'm working on the farm. And See, wait a second. I, I personally think if you have a farm, it qualifies you to occasionally, you know, maybe wear a cowboy hat during. I th- I don't think that's fake, right? Like, I think we need to come up with a definition of who can wear cowboy hats during the day and who can't. You have a farm. I think you're in. Yeah, I don't think we look out of place at all, but it's just. Like, if we well, came I'm, in with a cowboy hat, we'd all be like. I got a, I've got a cowboy hat, and when I put it on, I look like Rip. Except, <laughs> like, like. The bitch version of, <laughs> of, of Rip from Yellowstone. I wore it one time to a to J- in Jackson Hole to a rodeo and felt legit as hell. But I'm not. I'm not a cowboy, bro. It's amazing what a, how a cowboy hat makes you feel. No you know, doubt. Always like when I put it on. I don't know. And boots, like the 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 cowboy hat and boots. You're yeah. I'm, I just I've always you know for me I put it on and it's like it's time to go and have, but not only that it's like have fun you know get to play I music. I like it, man. I think it's um, great. Yeah, I mean when I come home though, like I'm working on the tractor. It, my hat's i got a pretty big lid so like it gets in the way man oh, you're like what's your number uh seven and three eights that's not that big. i'm seven five eights bro are you melon basketball you got a little bigger one mine jordan got me a new toboggan she was like hey i'm thinking about just like i'll just we'll just put it on because i put it on his way to tie and she was like just put it on a basketball for a couple of days and then it'll be <laughs> Stretch it it'll out. be good to go smart bro i, swear I have done like that. a baseball glove okay. yeah that's right you, you, oil, it up. you used to do that oil it oh, up yeah. and yeah what was it put it in the you oil it up you put two tennis balls in it yeah. or two baseballs put two belts, balls, belts yeah. around it yeah strap it down stick it under your bed for a few months yeah. it's got to be under the bed yeah did you put yours on the bed too yeah. why does it have to be under the bed i don't know <laughs> Passed down from the granddad, that's so, I'm sure. That's crazy. I mean, that's exactly where we put ours. We always sensed it down, stuck it under the bed. Um, I was when I was doing my research, which probably Dan didn't do. I was looking at your Instagram, sure. and uh, I saw a, a thing that said "My kind of sunset." And I watched this video of you. You're working on the farm. Someone's going down, playing with your dog, throwing the thing, grilling some burgers. Is that like? Is that what you do when your time off? Like, oh yeah, is that is it. that is that is that plugging in and recharging for you? It is, and and I you know I, I search. It took me a while to like search around and figure out how to find balance. Sure, oh, yeah. um, because you jump in to to roam around. I know you got to spend a lot of time on the road. You know, writing songs too, but that's not normal, you right? Know? It's it's overload. It's sensory overload, oh, and, and man, as many people sure. as we get to meet, it's awesome. But it's uh, it's not normal. No, and so you come home and have have those few days, and I was living uh, for a few years. I was living at a, a condo downtown in Nashville before it became Nashville. Um, it was like the only condo you could have down there. Yeah. We didn't have a grocery store, nothing. I mean, it was terrible. I was like, yeah. After a few years, I'm like, I don't feel right. And it just felt like I was in another hotel, and I never got to turn off. Yeah, and so I moved out outside of town, and uh, and I finally found peace. Nice. Yeah, you know, getting back into the country and and just having something to grasp onto and and recharge with and and now you know fast forward, I have the farm out out there outside of town about an hour and um, it's the best. I was yeah. telling I was telling Pat in the uh, in the parking lot we uh, we used to when we moved to town we my dad moved his houseboat from where we grew up to Percy Priest, Elm Hill Marina. And that's where we lived for four years. And Oh, uh, that's awesome. And dude, oh, like, you know, that? yeah, it's a, catching uh, crappie. I feel like we talk about it all the time. I, I know, but people n- new guests. Know this, but yeah, yeah that you're is, right. That is awesome. But we were, we were catching dinner and, and I mean, you know, 
doing that whole thing and Dan got a publishing deal with a, a little startup and mm. had a lot of money and they were like, man, we got this sick flat downtown in the Bristol. It's right above Losers and we were like, yeah, dude, let's do it. So, like, oh my gosh, working plumbing, like we're in. Yeah, yeah. Like, let's yeah. Go. A washing machine for our clothes. Across yeah, from Virginia, we can buy sandwiches and cigarettes all day, <laughs> you know. So we, we moved in for six months and after six months we were like, man, I think we're going, we're going to kick it back. We went at the, back. We, we went back the magic. Yeah. Well, it's just... It was so sirony, sensory overload, dude. and like I mean, it's not what you're talking about. It was, yeah. it was just, you, it's like your brain never turns off when you're, when, well, when you're used to, like, if you're from Tullahoma, you're from West Tennessee, where we're from, like, this ain't normal for us, no. you know. And as much as you try to fit yourself into that thing, it's like. Man, I need some crickets, yeah. you know, and, and, and I mean that's what I fall asleep to. Not not drunk people trying to get home from losers. And like know? you said, sirens. <laughs> yeah, every man. five minutes, a lot it of was sirens. Every five seconds, yeah. it felt like. Somebody and now, by. and hell, that was what eight years ago, like or ten years ago, maybe. I mean, yeah. it's, it, I'm sure it's way worse. Before it got now. crazy, yeah. Man, I've always wondered what it's like to live in an arena. Dude, it's awesome. It's, it's awesome, awesome till it's not awesome. It's awesome you know until saying? you're until it's just like the worst. But we had like you know? we had Wi Fi. They got Wi Fi out there. Um, but you, know. you can't technically live. So we didn't right. live in Marina. <laughs> right. We yeah, just yeah. visited 363 days a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got it. I <laughs> we, got we, it. We couldn't afford anywhere else. It seems I mean, like I, I think and I, I spent a lot of time on the water. Um, I love it, and and that was the first when I moved out of downtown. I didn't mention I moved to Old Hickory Lake. Come on, oh, yeah. I, a, I got a house out there and had a dock and everything. Dang. And um, I don't know. There's just a, it's, it seems like a different walk of people that are attracted to Thousands lake life, yep. and and for you guys, obviously marina life, even more so. Um, it, you know, when I'm in, in marinas on the whole degree, it feels a little bit like the Keys. Yeah. Like there's a little sense of pirate. Yeah, and, for sure. And all of those people. A thousand there. percent. I know exactly what you're talking and about. And I know for a fact there's people on Old Hickory Lake that are living there full time. Yeah. I mean, you can just tell. Oh, like, dude, there were there were guys. You mean, visit, you mean visiting? Visiting. Yeah. visiting yes. We would step out on the back and, you know, pee off the back porch or back, the back of the yeah. boat. I said the back porch. We call it the back porch. But, I mean, dudes, there would be like four or five dudes doing the same thing. <laughs> just what's it like? Those cats live there, too. Oh, you for know sure. I mean, like, I mean, he's like, couldn't get enough of it. Christmas lights. Yeah. Yes, you know, absolutely. they've got it all decked out. Music playing. Grills. I mean, it's a floating yeah. trailer park. That's really all it is. It I is. mean, yeah, you just kind of. It's expensive, though. Well, for They're up, proud of them now. Yeah. Oh, are they? For, I've looked at getting a slip, and I'm like, yeah. I think for, my, might just stay in the driveway. Dude, for us, it was like 300 a month. We split it. That's not bad at all. Yeah. No, so we just, that was cheaper than rent, you know. And boat was paid off. And yeah, so we just kind of just kind of hung out. Do <laughs> you guys still houseboat? Do you enjoy it or is it, are you over it? I'm over it. Yeah, yeah. yeah we no. just, I mean. Full up. Full up to, yeah, yeah, but I mean, we don't have enough time, you yeah. know, with, with kids and stuff. But dude, every chance I, I get to get on the water, dude, I mean, I'm on the water. Um, you know, I, I love bass fishing, and and I was going to ask you, did you do a lot of old like fishing on Old Hickory? I did, yeah, yeah, yeah I was obsessed. You know, until I got my farm, and then that just became right crazy to do list and a lot of chores. I, I was avid, like um, so much so I would get you know get on the bus and and I would nerd out on um, Navionics. Come on. So I don't even have to look at a depth finder because I know it, I know that lake so well <laughs> yeah. just from studying those maps constantly. Um, I can kind of tell you where everything is. I fished a uh, I fished as a co angler in one of those like Bass Master series or whatever it was, and it was like one of the first times I ever fished, and it was on Old Hickory. And we grew up close to Pickwick, and, mm -hmm. and kind of the same style like mm -hmm. boat docks, secondary points. Mm -hmm. You know, in the summer you fish ledges. And so this was like June, and uh, I called my the angler of the, the boat I was gonna be riding in, and and I was like, hey man, what do you want me to bring? You want me to bring some you know drop shots, Carolina rigs? We're gonna be doing the. And he was like, no man. He's like, just bring a flipping jig or just a flipping pole. And I was like, it's middle of summer. He's like, just just bring a couple of you know flipping flipping rods. And I was like, all right. So we get in that morning, and dude, we run twenty miles up the Cumberland oh, yeah. and back there into those some of those eddies yeah, yeah. and and those log jams. Yep. And bro, he had a home he homemade made his jigs. And gave me a few of them, and dude, we pulled them out of them logs all day. He won the tournament. I boated an eight, like eight three for him oh, out of the, out of the river. Awesome, and dude, it was it's the only time I've fished Old Hickory like that. But gosh, it was awesome. I've man. done the same thing. I, I got in with the guy, and we ran way up there. Yeah, and um, I, hell, I think it took us an hour and a half or something. Yeah, it was about a forty five minute ride for us. Yeah, and um, we got way up in it, and we we missed a couple that could have got us up in up in the money but yeah. he was throwing a, a frog too up in there really yeah top water yep <sighs> there ain't no better bite than that right yeah. there dude. i know it was really cool but yeah there's something about those guys that can custom 
This is this is an old cat. Made. Like he was he was traditional. You it's know? like the fish haven't ever seen it. It's yeah. their own color. <laughs> and uh, the, I, the hook set's not unbelievable. He's not ripped. He's just. And he's yeah. like, hey, grab the net. And I'm like, okay. And then there's an eight pounder and that's it. There. Like, God, man. What's the biggest bass you've ever caught? Uh, I mean, in open water, around seven. Around seven. Um, in, in Pickwick. But in a pond, you know, uh, eight. I've got, we've got yep. where we live, we've got a 20 acre lake behind our house in the community. And literally, there's, there's a bunch of houses back there and it's a private lake to the community. And me, my dad and Dan are the only one that fish it. We, when we moved in, the day... We were moving in the next day, the next morning. But you morning. had to live there in order to fish, yeah. which is really convenient for us. Yeah. That is awesome. Um, the day we moved in, we were exhausted from moving furniture all day. And that next morning, like 6.30, my dad calls me and wakes me up. And I roll over and grab my phone. And I'm like, hello? He's like, hey. He's wide awake. And I was like, what? Are you, what? I was like, it's 6.30, dude. I'm exhausted. He was like, I'm here. I was like, bro, we ain't getting started till like 10. He was like, no, no, no. I'm I won't go check out. I looked out the window, and he had his bass boat hooked up behind him. And <laughs> he dropped the boat in. And he, yeah, well, oh, it, awesome. yeah, not a big motor. You can just troll a motor. Yep. But, uh, dude, he's been ripping brim and crappie and bass out of that thing ever since. And so it's it's super convenient. He's caught a seven and a half out of there. Um, I know of some eights that have been caught out of there. And it's big enough and deep enough to to grow and hold a, yeah. you know, 10, 12, a big one. So, and it, it, it's not one you can go back there and catch 50 fish a day. Like, you got to go look for them and, and oh, find, the, cool. find the pattern and stuff. Yeah. So, it's it's fun. I want to hear about your farm, man. Tell me what you what you got, where you at. Uh, I'm northeast of, of Nashville. Gotcha. About okay. an hour from okay. downtown. And it was one of those, uh, I grew up always looking for permission to hunt. Same. And uh, and then moved, moved up here to Nashville out of high school and – just those permission farms kind of went away. Yeah, it's weird that that's been happening lately. Yeah, we, we kind of talked to Rennell about it the other day. Like, I I did I did the same thing. I bought a farm, and uh, we were talking about allowing people to hunt it. He was like, you know, you let people hunt. I was like, no, dude. Yeah, what are you talking about? It kind of blew him away. And he was like, what? And, and I, I think like, it's that Western thing too. Like, I was like, man, like I work. I want to secure a place for my kids and my brother and his kids and my dad. Like. Ain't nobody else coming on, you know, because I'm letting deer go and trying oh, to grow sure. deer. And, you know, you can't do and it. And it kind of got weird because they're so, you not weird and like it got weird, but he was like trying to paint me into a corner for fun. You right. Know? He yeah. was like, well, what about like wounded veterans? And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. Of course. Dude. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. anyway, he was like, what about kids? He was first like, well, how wounded? You know? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, I think that is, you know, we, we do have, and you guys obviously, especially right now, I mean, have a platform. To, to make a lot of good happen with, yeah. with our dirt, you know? Sure, man, um, for sure. That's the reason we got it, right? Yeah, but but I started, you know, I got to Nashville, and I, I started looking, okay, well, let's hunt public. So I started hunting out in Pegram. Yeah. Uh, Land Between the Lakes. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Did and, you go south, you know, did you ever hit, you know? No, I never did. That's where, that was our yeah. public ground for a while. Um, I've got buddies that still hunt it. Really? A lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's something about that, those big public tracks, man. They're just it's still to me today. I mean, I get to hunt some of the best dirt in the world. And, sure. and I still have this draw to land between the lakes. Yeah, I feel that. It's, no, I feel it's that. so hard to get on deer there. But if you get on them, man, there's some, I mean, still the biggest deer I think I've ever seen on hoof was at land between the lakes. Really? Really? Um, when I was scouting. Yeah. Is that bow hunting only? Or is that no? They you? do they do quite a couple quota hunts a, a year. Okay, gotcha. okay. And you have to put in for that. Or you put it? in for it, and gotcha. then you have your zones. You have to stay in. Yep. Um, but we would always come in on the on the north side up in Kentucky. We'd always hunt Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was this one year where it was it was like a drought year, and nobody could find deer. Like this group that we went with, they were always on good deer. So I always killed. Could, couldn't find them. Couldn't find them. And Dad and I came across this guy with a big deer in the back. And he's like, man, I'm, just because I'm done, I'm gonna tell you all what to do. Come on. Get down by the water in these draws. Mm. For whatever reason, you know, acorns are down there this year. Yeah. And we did that, man, and got on them. Really? And got in them, yeah. Never, I never never got a shot on one. Um, had one come in, a giant come in that was too dark. But um, So I've never killed up there. So it's like one of those things. Yeah, like, man. I got close several years. Yeah. And I never got it done, so it still eats at me. It's the, it was, it's the box that hadn't been checked. Yeah. yeah. But, but years go on. And, and just because I always had to ask for permission, yeah. never had – a place to go hunt. I yeah. was like, man, a dream of mine is to have my own dirt. To That's hunt. awesome. And yeah, I dude. finally got, I like to hear. I it. finally got to a place where I could start looking. And um, I was looking, you know, looking for about a year, year and a half, and um, came across a few options northeast of town. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was hunting on a lease south of Nashville, but I was having to drive 
through downtown Nashville to go hunt. Yeah. Yeah. And with all your gear, it was just like. It's unpredictable too. I mean, you, you try to catch out at two o'clock. Yeah, you, you may got get, you may get caught in two hours worth of traffic. And you're trying to be in a headspace of let's go hunt, and now you're stuck in a traffic jam. It's yeah, just, it wasn't right. So I started looking north of town, so I don't have to go through downtown. And yeah, the first three farms I thought were going to be the ones. Yeah, just fell flat. It, it wasn't what I was looking for. And like the last farm on it, it, it didn't show well online. It was because they had logged it, and it was like dead of winter muddy logging road pictures beautiful <laughs> oh that's the farm i want baby and so we get there and within you know a quarter of a mile riding on the on the uh four-wheeler i'm like holy crap this, this is, is it, it. <laughs> and not only is this it it was dirt cheap like this wow, logging company man. was trying to unload it yeah. yeah so i was able to afford a, a pretty good chunk and, and i just got lucky like it was probably going to be a flip farm yeah um yeah, i had buddies at the time that were getting farms and, and kind of hunting them for a year or two and then it, you know putting food pots in and flipping them sure and um and i'm like it'll probably be that and then my neighbor to the east the next turkey season came around and the the turkeys would always stay on the perimeter of this farm because it was so thick from where yeah. they had logged it yeah tough to get turkeys on and i'm like dad gum it you know and i was like i'm just gonna cold call this guy to the east of me and see if he'll let me hunt and He's like, he answers. And I was like, hey, I was just calling about your farm Wait, next door. I, I want to know exactly how you say Because do you go, hey, I'm Dustin No, no, no. Lynch. Hey, you know, hey do you like country music? Keep that card in the pocket okay, for okay. as long as possible. Okay, okay. But I know I call him. It's like, hey, as I was calling about your farm, um, you know, at this address. He goes, how did you know I wanted to sell? And I'm like, oh. Huh. Bingo. All right. Yeah. And uh, just fell from the heavens right there. Yeah, yeah. So got to talking to him and his sister got involved. He was older and, and his sister got involved and screwed the whole thing up. She wanted to like triple the price. Well, of nice. course. Yeah. Love so I, I just passed and sat on, sat for about a year. And then she came back and actually wanted to make sense of it. Heck yeah. So I ended up getting that piece to the east of me. And then that connect, that joined you. That joined me. And then the, the neighbor to my north um, had this cow pasture and you'd always see birds out in it. From my from my original piece, <laughs> and he had I, this is a, this is a guy. This is our I, dude, man. I, 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 I'm yeah. loving this. He I wasn't a, sure exactly where you were on the scale. <laughs> we of, never are, man. but now it's like, oh, we're good. Yeah, we're chilling. <laughs> this guy bro. knows what he's talking about. He had an easement that went through me, and um, and it got to the point where I'm like, okay, I want to build. Like, I'm going to be here. It's not. Just, I, I want to build a little something out yeah, here. Man, yeah, man. Sure. You know, yeah. and and have a little cabin or put an RV in or something, and. How it cut, I'm like, man, if I could get that farm, I would build on that farm. You always think that, though. Yeah. You always think, man, if I could get if that. If I could get that. And, yeah. that, yeah. and he really had an easement through my original piece uh, to come in on the south side. Because all of this, come to find out, used to be his. All really? of it did. Two-track or like an actual gravel road? Uh, Actual gravel, gravel road, yeah. yeah. And um, so he's like, yeah, I'm not ready to sell yet. He's just summering cows on it. And mm. um. I'm okay. Well, if you ever get ready to sell, please let me have first shot at it because you run right through me. Mm. And he's like, I'll do it. So I get, we go another couple of years and I get concrete poured and trusses delivered. And this sucker stops me in the road. <laughs> no way. Yes. How like big I'm, of a pad you pour? It's a 48 by 96. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. So I'm big like, I'm putting, I'm putting, you know, yeah. boats in there in the off season yeah, yeah, yeah. and the whole thing. Yeah. And he's like, my wife wants me to get rid of it. I'm like, of course she does. Now that I've put a pad down, yeah, right. yeah, where I don't want one, <laughs> right? right. Yeah. Where I tried not to put a pad down for <laughs> years, yeah. And, Maybe uh, you just put casters on it, hook your tractor to it, and just pull it yeah. up to the new. Yeah. Place. He knew he had me, man. He yeah. worked me over. He would not budge on the price. I finally got him to throw in. He had because uh, I wanted to, you know, another dream of mine is to get back into cows. That was my first job ever. Was was helping on a farm down the street from where I was, I was a, living. Another check on the you can wear a cowboy hat list. If you actually work with cows at one time. $5 an hour, boys. Bro, now Come you're there. On. I mean, you own a farm. You worked with cows. Yep. You can wear a cowboy hat as much as you Bro, want. All the time. Legit. Yeah, all the time. You can sleep um, in one. Nobody's saying nothing about that. Nope. It, yeah, and um, so – I got. It. I convinced him to let me keep a corral he had made in these trees. He's like, "Fine, I'll do that." And then he had this old junker um, disc and this old junker like eight foot deck um, bush hog. And he's like, "No, nah, you got to buy those from me." I'm like, "Dude, you haven't used. You haven't moved these in four years. They've been sitting on our property line and, and, a, a, and a bush hog. In a bush hog." Jeez. And uh, he's like, "No, nah, you got to pay, pay me for those." And I'm like. Okay, here's a thousand. Bucks. I was like, "Come on, man! Like, you haven't budged on this price." Finally, he gave me those, and I was like, "We got a deal." <laughs> um, you had to get to the point where it. So felt, I ended, felt like I a ended good up deal. with this original farm that was, you know, just a logging dump. 
Yeah. Um, but ha- ended up having a giant on it. I, I ran cameras like, of course, the first month. Oh, I'm yeah. dumping out corn and trying yeah, yeah. to see what's on it. No doubt. And there weren't re- many deer trails. There weren't many deer on the farm, but there was an absolute monster on this thing. And um, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm at least going to hunt him for a little bit. But I, I started out with that original track, and then I wound up with – three farms that joined too that's awesome and, and through the, the years dream, yeah. like you come across your neighbors and are they cool people or are sure. they idiots right um and most of them around me are cool yeah. yeah and and i would like to say most like to grow big deer they don't um yeah. you know but we, we run into the same problem but yeah. it, it, i think if i do i still got a lot of work to do to get my habitat where i want it but um that's what i'm obsessed with right now but uh I think I think I'll be there pretty pretty much long term now. Where where do turkey if turkey and deer are right here? Which one do you prefer? Like oh, it's pretty even for me. Yeah, my, my, I think that what I obsess about the most and spend way more money on it than I should is is probably you know bow hunting whitetail. Come on, man! Uh, I just I love I'm the right chess there with game, you, dude. Of, mm-hmm. Cat and you know, mouse, bro. It is crazy, and 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 you get to chase the same animal for years, and uh, most of the time they win. And you know, I literally said that same statement. That's, kinda, that's why I'm obsessed with bow hunting too. I mean, we I love, love it. it when we win, but I almost equally as much love it when they win because yeah. it just keeps the challenge of, and that's what to me bow hunting is. It's just like, man, if you're gonna fool an old buck bow hunting, you gotta be, you gotta have it all lined out. Baby. Yeah, I mean, and still get no, lucky. Yeah, there ain't. Yeah, <laughs> still get real lucky. Yeah, yeah, exactly. and he's got to be, he's got to make a wrong move for sure. What happened to your big buck that you were seeing on the farm? Did you Man, I, I got to him? watch. I chased him for a couple of years. You know, I, I don't get to hunt as much as I would love sure. to. And and now with the opportunity to hunt with Drury Outdoors, yeah, uh, I've been hunting with those guys for a handful of years, and um, you know, so that takes a a couple of you know weeks of hunting away from where right. I could be hunting Tennessee. Yep. I don't get to chase him full time, but um, I hunted him for a couple years. In November, I had a video of him chasing a doe down this logging road, like November 22nd, I think. This year? or No, this would have been three, four years ago okay. now. Okay. And uh, and then he, I never saw him mm-hmm. again. So I don't know. I think he was so big. I think if somebody would have got him, we'd have seen it or heard about it. You know what score-wise, what are we talking about? Man, he was 160s for sure. Jeez. I mean, an absolute like Monster I was showing him to Mark Drury and, and his team, and they yeah. were like, "Yeah, holy crap!" Like I, we didn't know you had deer like that in Tennessee. I mean, he yeah. was a, a a daggum shooter. If you can let, I hadn't seen one like that since. Yeah, yeah. If you can just let him, if you can just let him age, man. If you yeah. can let him get out there to six, I had, seven a, years I had old, a, uh, I had a, I had a a one that was like finally showed some awesome potential this year, and he was for sure a four year old because I had him last year as a three on camera and. I'm like, all right, let, let's see. Let's roll the dice. See if we yeah, can get yeah, five. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you, got my some neighbor, you got some killers around you, huh? My neighbor, yeah, he and his brother hunt. They 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 usually only hunt a week of muzzleloader, which is, as we know in Tennessee, that's, when, the, that's, that's the, the jam, time. dude. That's yeah, the that's jam. The, um, and I don't know if he got him then or, or later, but he, my neighbor ended up getting him. And, of course, you hear about it. He's like, man, biggest deer I've ever shot. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I bet it's the four-year-old. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, did y'all get a picture of him? I had the other neighbor. He's like, yeah, I think he posted on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, pull it up for me. <laughs> Listen, like, dude, we're all living the same game. Like, there he is. Exactly yeah, man. Man. Gummit, yeah. You know? But, you know, we always have – There, you know, there. I don't have anything that's – I'm super pumped up. Sure. But there, I've got a bunch of old deer still. There's all. They're always going to get through. Yeah. You know, there's always going to be some to get through. You just hope, like, the the – the pretty boys make it. The through. ones with potential. Ooh, for yeah. sure, man. I'll tell you what I started doing, and, and this might be a good alternative. Um, if, you, if you're if you not able to buy a lot of land around you, not you specifically, I'm just talking to the listener, is I went, and so I bought my farm, and there was uh, a couple of hundred acres over here that the guy just let kids hunt it like crazy. Mm. And, bro, every three-year-old I have was just getting capped. Every – it'd be opening day arrival, and I'd just – I'd check Facebook two hours later and there they are. <laughs> there they are, man. I've been passing them for two years, you yeah. know. And so uh I actually went to the guy and was like, Hey man, he was talking to me. He had ran over a uh a shed and it had pierced his tractor tire. He's like, Man, I had my kids at the creek. He's like, Man, I had to put a damn tire on that tractor. It's three hundred and eighty bucks for a front tire. You know, they're expensive. Oh yeah. I was like, Hey man. Why don't you let me lease that ground for you, and I'll pay you X amount. Then you can, you know, you can buy tractor tires every. You know, that you're gonna be able to. In that moment, he was like, "All right, let's do it." And I don't even hunt that. 
So, but so, just, so what you're saying, you took kids hunting rights away from by <laughs> buying a tractor. No as we said, this is, this he is just, a game of chess. He just, no yeah, he just talked about. He just talked about wanting the kids. To, <laughs> this is a game of chess. <laughs> there's no way to there's acquire there's the kids playing checkers out here without yeah. taking somebody's <laughs> rights away, dude. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's no way to win this. Crazy. I'm just saying. <laughs> yes, I took it some kids from the kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From the good kids. job, man. And then. Because of that, I've been killing bigger deer. I was going to say, you got some big deer right. now. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can lock up that ground around you just by, like, maybe leasing it, you can acquire enough to to actually grow some deer. And I think that's what, what I've been able to do over there. Thank goodness it's just kind of have enough where you can hold them tight, you yeah. know, and hold them and, and keep them in there with food, with cover, uh, with uh, not honestly, the the thing that's what worked best for me is not pressuring those mm-hmm. areas and just letting them know that they can walk in there and a refuge, eat, man. hang out and yeah. chase those sanctuary. Yeah, shot at. I've learned process. so much from Mark. Yeah, yeah, I was Mark, about to say, Mark yeah, Drury sure, is, yeah. dude. Is, there's that, he is like yeah. an encyclopedia. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, like, stuff, absolutely, man. like I grew yeah. up watching Legend. those guys and and now getting to be buds with them and and talk to them on a regular basis. It's just amazing, you know, the strategy that goes into. Yeah, you've got a you've got a farm, but what's the best way you can you can hunt the farm? What's the best way you can design it to True. where you're giving the deer the best chance at survival? Mm-hmm. You know, Absolutely. not only from hunters, but from everything else. No doubt. Totally. And you know, and 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 I don't think what a lot of people realize is is we're the least of a deer's worries. No you know? doubt. Like we're man. we're their best option. Yeah. Seriously, because yeah. if 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 a hunter's not you know harvesting a deer, it's going to get eaten alive. Sure. Which is not fun. Um, or, or they're going to disease out, you yep, know, and, yeah. and get weak. So, um, it, just learning how you design farms and like the access of, you know, designing, you know, to and from the, the food plot or the deer stand, however you're going to hunt them. Dustin Lynch has where, passed, has passed my mega legit hunting bar. Oh, dude, he, I'm, he's, I'm every day no, a nerd you on this. Like you, yeah, you're, you're, you're just like us, legit, man. Dude, that's yeah. awesome. Um, and hear. it kind of takes, it kind of takes like. Because I heard you say earlier you, you hunted with your dad growing up and all that stuff. Yeah. And and that's a lot of like hunting back then is just getting in the truck with a gun, going and sitting in a barn and, and, yeah, and, and right. waiting. Yeah. When you start prepping a farm and start learning about that stuff and, and and really looking at it from the deer's eyes instead of your own. Yeah. Like that takes it to another level. And, and, and of obsession too. Of oh, like, say exactly. Because like, I'm, I'm sitting here right now talking to you guys and listening to y'all talk and I'm thinking about, man, I've got to, you know. I need to create some more cover on that real side. <laughs> yeah, and, dude. Absolutely. And, and like that's what I'll do on my off time. Like yeah, I'm man. gonna be in the woods yeah. creating cover for deer on my off day. I was gonna ask and it's you. So, it sounds so silly. No, bro. Like, no, like, I doesn't. love it that much. <laughs> you have to and do I, it. like I literally get injuries from trying to yeah. like, oh, make look, better out I, I just took I just took a uh what do they call it when you a stitch. I just took a stitch out of that one right there from brow tines rattling because I didn't cut my brow tines yeah, off, yeah. smacked it. Yeah, I had to get a stitch in it. So, yeah, I'm with you, bro. Well, let me ask you this. What do you feel like are some things you've done or implemented on your farm that is that has either helped your population or has helped helped give your bucks and, and, and does some some of that cut? What do you feel like, you, okay, I did this to my farm and this made a difference in the outcome of my I'll home. tell you what, you know, I got a new – you get a new piece of land and, and you want it to look good. And you, you have fun – Keeping it up, yeah, you know, and Thousands. manicuring it, yeah. yeah, and then you realize, wait a second, yeah, I've taken all, I've taken all of my cover, all of my edges, all of my soft edges out, totally. um, and so like for me, it's the discipline of letting weeds grow, letting the fields grow up, <laughs> yeah, quit bush you know? hogging, quit bush yeah, hogging, yeah, because initially yeah. you're like, man, this looks so good, yeah, yeah, man, and and you're really manicuring everything, and and it's like, yeah, stop bush hogging because. The turkeys are getting picked no doubt, off. Man. Fawns don't have anywhere Fawns to go. Fawns have nowhere to go. Yeah, like mm-hmm. you feel good about yourself because it looks awesome and it's pretty, but you're actually doing damage. And I would say that, like really trying to make sure I'm throttling how much I'm on the farm. Totally. It's tough. Like I, I definitely need some help out there, but it's tough for me because I don't want I don't want to get, you know, somebody involved that feels like they've got to go every day do something. Yeah, man. Um yep. And and yeah, I think just letting it rest and let it be more natural. I completely I mean, agree. Just to answer your question. Yeah. We uh we took I would say probably 30 acres of my farm and that we used to bush hog, I mean, three or four times a year, Mm -hmm. honestly, and uh, just let it grow and uh, cut fire breaks around the outside. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start burning it every every four years. We hadn't made it four years yet since we started doing it. But I've already seen uh, pictures of more turkeys, more poults. Mm -hmm. 
uh, more farms. And, and I mean, it's kind of a dual uh, deal because you're given – once that natural growth comes up, you're giving protection to the to the poults and, and and a place to feed, but that's also really great deer browse. Yeah, you know? and we've and we've seen a lot of we didn't kill a lot because we we're just letting the deer grow. Um, but the the buck I took off there spent a ton of time in that natural browse. Yeah, and then I don't even really even. I mean, my wife's like, let's take a ride on the side by side. I'm like, Mm-mm. no, yeah, I know. No, it. same but, with my friends. They're like, man, can we let's go oh, ride side by side? Same. It's like I got. <laughs> No, only no, you know, bro. only in January. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Um, yeah, late January. And, and once you start, you know, once you start riding around, you realize, crap. You know, keeping up logging roads is a lot of work, man. Yeah, it you is. start rutting up a road. It's not fun when you own no. it. When, when you, it's somebody yeah. else's, you're like hammer down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you know to to piggyback onto that, probably my next biggest project is going back in. You know, because I've had this the original farm for five, six years, seven years now, and um, all of that logged. Uh, you know, early successional growth is now getting shaded out by mm-hmm. like some mid-story stuff. So I've got to go back in and like create a lot more openings than that that used to be there. Yep. And get that browse back up. But my my favorite project each year is control burns. I had the state come out and do it the first year. I find that's a common thing. People yeah. that control burn, that's their favorite pyros, time of the year. Man. Yeah, yeah that's pretty, pretty sick. Like yeah. Adult fire. I think I would burn all of West Tennessee if I tried to <laughs> yeah. control burn our place. I love it. And like now watching watching pros do it yeah and you can like uh, one of my favorite like i obsess every day on you know especially certain times of years growing deer tv yeah yep. with grant and great those guys. information man great, great information. it's incredible and they're they're big advocates on control burns mm-hmm. and and rotating all that but that's really kind of how i've learned how to safely do it um was watching the guys do it on my place they kind of forced it they shouldn't have burned it was just like they knew they were getting paid and it was still wet and they're like not oh, even really? half of it went, hmm. but I initially started out with with uh, my tour manager, my bus driver, and another buddy. <laughs> hey, what you got going on? Yeah, I, I need you at my place. And and, and for we a burnt days. Uh, we burnt like the first year we burnt uh, this hillside that was eight acres, and last year we burnt eighty acres. Nice oh, man. man. And dude, you talk you like eighty acres on fire. It's the coolest thing. It looks like the end of the world. It is there like any Armageddon? Is there any freak out? <laughs> oh, there's always freak out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. keeps Tell it fun him. though. Tell him. Me and Dan, we had this. <laughs> Uh, on our place in West Tennessee, this one spot that was super overgrown. First off, let's say this: take Dustin's advice and like do, your do research. some research before you just go. <laughs> Don't just go shit. throw gasoline yeah. out. Yeah, that's what, Which we, is did. what we did. <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, I think we like we could burn this. And Dan was like, how? I was like. Dude, I don't know. I think we just dumped some gasoline out here and light it on fire. And, dude, before we know it, man, there's this group of, oh, like, we, dude, there, there was, like, helicopters flying over. <laughs> they were, like, hiding in the trees, oh, bro. Oh, man. We, we had, the woods we had towels. We lit the woods on fire. Yeah, we lit the woods on fire, man. But man, there was, was a big grove of dead trees. And so when it got, I was like, maybe it'll just skip around. And all of a sudden, it was like, and it was going, in, and we just had this giant, like, Inferno happening in front of us, and how uh, and Reed's neighbors' like, farms were hey, calling man, we us. Gotta, we gotta stop that out over there. We gotta stop. <laughs> yeah, buddy, comes like y'all burning something up there. We're like, no, nah, man, just a little campfire. We're putting it out right, and we were running through the woods like stomp. I mean, luckily it didn't get out of control. Y'all kept easily it under, yeah. could have, but easily you talk about have. freak out mode, bro. We were. We were there. I was yeah. like, we need the wind to switch. We need the wind well, to switch. Yeah. I think God had a little grace on us and just maybe dropped a little It's crazy how, how quickly dead grass goes, man. Oh. And it gets to a point you're like, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll get in front of it. It gets so hot, you can't. Yeah, and leaves. You can't even get close. Dead leaves burn in an instant. Yeah. Um, and, dead trees and I, do too. One thing I yeah. almost, my neighbor saved me for this. I, I just called him like, hey, just so you know, I'm about to burn this hillside. This is the first one I was going to attempt on my own. He goes, did you call the state? I was like. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize I had to. He's like, "Yeah, you better get you a burn permit, or they're going to oh, hang you." During the burn permit era, and, uh, era. and there's certain times of years you don't have to have one, and then there's a majority time of the year. Is yeah. that statewide so or is that county wide? I'm not sure. So I'm I, not I, anyway, I call I call the state, and then I call uh, the county, you know, fire department. Yeah, and you'll still have people driving down the road thinking it's the end of the world. Yeah, like, sure. You can let all your neighbors know. There's still gonna be somebody driving down call the road. Call the cops. Like, hey, or, this farm's on fire. Right. Yeah. It, if they know about it, they're like, "Yeah, we know." Yeah, yeah. control burn, whatever, right. whatever for habitat. So yeah. that's important. Who uh, thinking about doing it? Who, who was it? Your dad? Like, got you? Like, got you into it? Was, did, yeah, your dad, it was, did your dad hunt? Like, it was dad. Yeah, and I started bow hunting when I was thirteen. So I think my entry, my entry to hunting was dove hunting. Yeah, which I think is a lot of people. Dude, you're you know, the dog. Like yeah, when when your yeah. dad's going, he's like, he's like, yeah, you can go if you go pick up the dove. That's for it. Him. <laughs> and um, so that's where it started. And 
I loved it, and he could tell that I loved it. And I, you know, he he grew up in Florida, so he was chasing Flor. Deer wasn't huge down right, there, right. you know, but he was he was still out chasing hogs and trapping raccoons and stuff. So it was it was in his blood. We did a lot of fishing growing up, but yeah, us too. Um, I for whatever reason took an interest in in uh, in hunting. He went and he. I remember. I think the first thing I remember of us doing with deer hunting, he went uh, and built a buddy a deer stand. I think it was, I think we just built it out of wood. Yeah. And I was like, man, I want to do, I want to deer hunt. So I think we just started doing it. I loved it. And then he got, uh, believe it or not, right down the street from us was a guy that did, art, had a little archery shop out of his garage. Cool. It's part time archery shop. Oh, and you were in then. Yeah. I, he and I got bows. I was 13 and we started shooting and I started hunting, man. And it was game on. Yeah. yeah. Bro. <laughs> you feel that, you feel that adrenaline when you're on the ground with a deer. I was hunting on the ground at first. <laughs> Come on, 13 man. with a bow. <laughs> and then you, then you actually like harvest one. You shoot yeah. one and it just sets it on fire. Yeah. yeah then it was, you're all then it was just, that was it. And, and, and still like just the, the anticipation of watching, uh, you know, the outdoor channel. Yeah, bro. On the weekends, you know, yeah, you, man. You're looking forward to the weekend because you're not in school, but then you've got, you know, jury outdoors coming on. And this oh, yeah, is, you know, man. this is when they were, we still had video cameras this big. Absolutely. You know? Me and my buddy started videotaping each other um, when we were 15 bow hunting. We had camo duct tape on these <laughs> giant. <laughs> we did the same thing. You know, these giant. We did and, the same and, thing. And um, that's what I was going to do for a living, for, for life. I was going to be outdoor tv yeah bro <laughs> host and cameraman <laughs> even um, before you started like playing music and singing that was the drive or? that was it man i was obsessed really yeah so when yeah, did you pick up the guitar i picked it up originally when i was eight and then gave it up and then i picked it up again when i was um 14 did you always kind of write and sing or were you just kind of like, yeah I, I immediately like as soon as i could kind of get through playing and singing I, I had this affinity to like really try to write a song and sure um Man, getting to record something on my mom's like cassette deck and yeah, go play yep. it in her car yep. was the coolest thing yep. ever. I remember it was like it was yesterday and it was like so addicting. Yeah. And that that became hunting and fishing always stayed, but that was like, okay. So when did you decide like I'm go I'm going, I'm gonna I'm gonna chase this thing down? Um I will say probably when I was between probably 15, mm. 15 or 16, we started a band. I know I was 15 because my mom was taking me over to my buddy's house to, so we could practice. Couldn't even drive. Couldn't even drive yet. Was it the Dustin Lynch band? Did you have some no, sweet name? It was It was back in the day. We uh, It took forever to find a name, but we finally came across this this name called 15 Rain was our band name. <laughs> Sick, bro. Ah, dramatic. Sick. Some, 30, some 41. Some 41. Yeah. Blink-182. Blink yeah. yeah. Matchbox 20. Uh -huh. 15, 15 Rain, rain dog. <laughs> and uh, it took us forever to figure it out. You have a bunch of names. And... Um, my mine drummer. was fresh from 15, so mine was a thing in a number two. There you go. So. My drummer was taking a was cheating on a quiz on, in English class on uh I forget what it was, Great Gatsby or something. Yeah. And the answer to number 15 was rain. And somebody shouted like he was like, Hey, what's you know? Yeah. And somebody's like, 15 rain. <laughs> and he's like, that's he like, it. It's a band aid. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's what we named ourselves. And we we did uh <laughs> but we were straight into like trying to do originals it was like little, like kind of pop rocky yeah, like man, immediately, original stuff. Originals. immediately no yeah. covers no. no we were doing covers okay. too but like um we immediately started trying to write because i was so obsessed with writing yeah and, were you writing uh, with your little band yeah like y'all 15 rain was writing 15 rain yeah. songs yeah, yeah man so, we come would just on. jam it's still it's still yeah. wild it's still how i love to like make our shows we just there's i don't have like somebody that helps me out and is like hey what we were thinking about this is the soundtrack to this tour or anything like that i know some people have like a musical director that kind of maps out their songs and hmm. whatever like i still get with my band and we'll huddle up and just jam until we find it yeah and that's cool. how we that's how cool, we still do our man. shows that's um, awesome and that's how we were doing we would just sit around and like jam and find it and then i'll go home and write lyrics and um we came up to nashville and recorded in antioch tennessee in this dude's basement <laughs> went home <laughs> on our you know parents printer printed off the cd cover and burned them on our burned cds on the you know our family yeah, man, computers and and yeah. started handing those out and selling them and um playing shows and and, and yeah we would thing. play we would play you know walkathons and car dealerships yeah. and on the trailer they pull up yeah, and, yeah our yeah. uh we we had this guy that that approached us and was like man i can get y'all into manchester tennessee at this this club and we're like you know sweet big time first, yeah our first club and he was hanging exit in over our, our heads too oh, at the time. Wow. <laughs> i'll get you in there too i was just you know whoever yeah right. <laughs> 
manager. <laughs> he's grinding. Yeah, he's grinding no, too. He's, grinding. he's trying to make. He probably, it away, yeah. I signed contracts with like eighty of those. Yeah, days. right. <laughs> and uh, so we go and <laughs> we go. We we play this thing. We play this building, and uh, I'm like, man, is this a Mexican restaurant? A, a tire <laughs> shop? <laughs> Why is, all combined. Yeah. Why is there a stripper pole? But at 16, you're like, hell yeah, there's Absolutely. a stripper I'm in. pole. <laughs> well, come to find out, it's like a, a rotational venue. So on Thursdays, they have strippers. And I forget what day we played. Sorry. One is my dad at the time had a, a insulation company, like a little side gig insulation company. And a couple of his workers, um, I was telling dad, I was like, it's some like Hispanic like restaurant, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. can't figure out what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Dad's like, well, I'm asking my workers. And they're like, they tell him, like, no, it's a strip club on whatever. <laughs> He's like, Dustin, well. get well. in here. That didn't go over well with mom. <laughs> yeah, that's a show, that's the show they couldn't come to. We got to play yeah. that place twice, and then that, that plug got pulled on. <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, we we just beat that's around, and great. then college comes, and, and everybody kind of had different aspirations. Um, My drummer was a huge Alabama fan, so he wanted to go to Bama, so he went there. Um, I was headed to MTSU with the guitar player. We we're going to keep the music thing going. Mm -hmm. um, the bass player was super talented. Wanted to go to UT Knoxville and do architecture. So we kind of split up. Yeah. Out of high school and um, what year was this? Two thousand three. Okay, gotcha. And uh, then at last minute, um, I got a call from Lipscomb University to to get a scholarship to play golf. Wow. And, really? Uh, so I, I did that. It got me to Nashville. It was like that golf got me to Nashville. Wow. So I could actually really jump into learning how man, music how works. how perfect is that, man? Yep. It's funny how. And uh, that's that's what got me here, man. And and the first night I moved in, my parents left. And before they got to the end of the road, I was at the Bluebird, man. Wow. And uh, that's cool. scared to death. I thought yeah. I was in the ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did. It was like I was scared to death to go anywhere in Nashville. I was like, I'm going to get killed everywhere I go. <laughs> Do you remember who you saw who was playing? Um, I don't, I don't remember. I, had, I didn't probably get Tony Arada. If I yeah, probably it. Tony Arada. That's who was playing yesterday, <laughs> right. Luke. That's yeah. who was playing every time we asked him who they saw <laughs> yeah. at the Is Bluebird. It? Tony Arada. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dance. Um, nine o'clock show. I didn't get yeah. in. I got the, you know the, it was capacity. I I just watched through the windows, but I was like the most <sighs> epic moment of of life right there. First night in Nashville and get to watch through the Bluebird Cafe. Dude, Dang, that's come awesome. On, yeah, man, that's a, that's that's a great story. We had come up in high school, me and the band and played an open mic at Bluebird though. Cool. Yeah. So we like I knew Yeah. I was obviously a well they, they're actually still airing back then. They're airing um like Tuesdays at the Bluebird mm -hmm. on TNN. Yeah, yeah. I remember a Channel 33 for me. I don't yeah. know what it was for y'all, but we used to watch TNN all the time. Man. Yep. And um it, it's just it's cool like Moving to Nashville, it was the Grand Old Opry. It was Bluebird Cafe and and Lower Broadway, mm -hmm. and like just trying to you know my goals were to play all three of those things, and that's kind of where I was. Man, and, and of course those goals have changed at this point. But so did you? You just got to Nashville, started connecting, networking, writing as much as you could. Yeah, it, it you know it took a while. I, I had a lot on my plate trying to c continue on. My golf scholarship was the reason I could be in Nashville. Sure. I couldn't afford to be here any other way. So, like, that was a huge focus. A lot of time, like, trying to play my butt off and um, keep that thing. That's awesome. You know, and and I did. And uh, and then, you know, at Lipscomb University, I think it's got a lot more relaxed now. But back then, it was super strict. Like, if, if you left campus after 7 p.m., you had to check out, tell them where you were going. Yeah, really? Then you come back, and they're like, where'd you go? You're at the sounds game. Okay, do this breathalyzer. Like, I mean, it was strict. Oh, really? yeah. I didn't even know college could – do that yeah if you're 21 and even showed up anything on a breathalyzer you're out of college anything yeah golf scholarship gone yeah all, all, all is gone yeah. so it's super strict so um we would go to vanderbilt you know we'd go see our parents but we'd go to vanderbilt yeah. and, and go to their frat parties and yeah that's where i was like wait a second yeah you're hiring these bands for how much money to play these cover songs like yeah. i can do this so i started chopping away at getting my cover list up and uh and and taking notes at these parties on like what right. was working. Yep. And research. Uh, I mean, I, yep. I, we did this. I had the band that did basically the same thing you're saying you did in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm a Mississippi State, I'm a Bulldog guy, and I can't even be mad at Ole Miss because of how much money we made off those returns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they would shell it out. Son. Yeah. And it, and it really sets a great foundation uh, for, for, for knowing what the listener wants to hear right? without a doubt whether still, you like it or not that's it i still I, I still use a lot of those skills from those days Same. in the frat houses um on lower broadway play yep. lower broadway for years too like 
And that never changes. No. I mean, we were just in Mexico for the our ninth Crash My Playa with Luke, and we've created this monster down there. Did he introduce you this time, or how'd that go? I introduced him this year. <laughs> Let's get give us give us the uh, give us your the Dustin Lynch story on um, on what happened last year. To, I know to, what to happened. That bitch was drunk. I know. Oh, of course, no, ain't was... no doubt. Ain't no doubt. So but no but he had to release an apology, didn't he? Yeah, he like, did. Yeah. There's no context, right? So you, you see in 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 writing in these articles on oh, TMZ they get everything and whatever, hundred percent correct. And for sure, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. And, but but there's no context of like how it was said. You just read it and it's like, wow, that's terrible. Oh, yeah. he snubbed Dustin Lynch. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he's he's like trying to crack jokes and. You know, he's because I've been down there with him every year. Like, we kind of have done that every year together down there yeah. and multiple nights together. It right. isn't just like I play and he plays. Like, we've collabed every year on yeah. stuff. <laughs> so, the crowd down there, everybody's been seven times or like they've all get it and they all understand what it is and yeah. how loose it is. And that's why they go back. Like, For you're sure. getting a once in a lifetime show. Absolutely. A circus that you can only get there. And he's never yeah. able to say, any of that in the States right. on tour because Live Nation will pull his contract. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we know what we're getting down there. And he's trying to be funny and introduce me. Well, he starts going down this road of just bashing me. And to the point to where I'm looking at his manager like, dang. Like, <laughs> Not that you care, just that like it might get him in trouble. And so, yeah, we hit the stage. And and it anyways, it catches fire. We get back home. He's duck hunting and I'm deer hunting or whatever. Yeah. And we're looking at all these articles pop up like, oh, crap. And uh, so he has to apologize. You know, especially with, you know, now he's worrying, obviously, American Idol. Yeah. Who cares about the country music thing? It's yeah, American it's Idol. No that, doubt. You know, you got to watch out for it. <laughs> no doubt. And um, <laughs> so he does that. So he, he like, he can't, he gets to where he can't sleep at night because he's worried about what my parents think. Oh, mm. man. Which is, just shows you what kind of guy Luke is. So, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's like, he, like, calls me. He's like, what's their email? I want to apologize to him. Um, and he goes, you know what? Next year you get to introduce me. You have a year to figure out how to do it. So I'm like, oh crap, you know, I can't like go in. I don't want to go in hard on him like he did me. Like, what yeah. can I do? So I'm like, you know what? We're gonna do a f- official roast, nice. and uh, the best roaster of all time is Jeff Ross. And so, did you get him down there? Got a hold of him, <laughs> and I love uh, that, man. we wore him out. <laughs> <laughs> we wore him plum out. That's <laughs> awesome, man. He probably loved and it. Every it was segment. it was one of those things where you're like, please connect, please connect, you know. And oh it, like, yeah, yeah. The first the <laughs> Like one of the first zingers that was I knew was not yeah I want to hear best. I want to hear some of some of them. just just to, just well, yeah one of the first zingers like the crowd reacted pretty good too I'm like oh we got him okay because yeah, like, yeah, I know yeah, what's yeah. coming yeah no you know his I think his new single Southern and Slow so okay. like he cracked him on that he's like finally you, you're writing something autobiographical <laughs> um, but it was more of that stuff there's Beautiful. some stuff we had to edit out about <laughs> Caroline and. Uh, Ryan Seacrest and yeah, uh, but, <laughs> but uh, we kept it pretty family friendly. But it was great, man. It was, it was good. Jeff, I'm, Jeff did a great job, and he went like above and beyond. Yeah, you know, sure. he was really into it, so <laughs> it turned out great. And, and it come to find out, they you know we, you're always going. At what point or is is enough crash my playas and yeah. uh, confirmed the last night of the festival. The the guys backstage, Luke was on stage, and I went back to get another beer or something, and they're like. We're thousand percent doing year ten. Start planning for it. So that's awesome. What we we started out doing. They asked me to do a couple songs by the pool the first year ever. They're just making it up, and uh, I'm like, a couple songs. Screw y'all. I've never been to Mexico. Like, so me and my band. I had it was me and my guitar player and my my drummer had a cajon. We stopped by the liquor store on the way there in the resort, and we just grabbed a bunch of bottles of liquor. <laughs> And we take them out to the pool, and we sit on the edge of the pool, and we start playing songs. Yeah, man. And uh, they wanted two songs. We played for an hour and a half and had people <laughs> going crazy. Of course, so man. The, the promoters came to me. They're like, dude, we got to do this next year. I was like, well, give me some speakers next year, yeah, please. Yeah. Give me some, yeah. And uh, so we lo- did a little stage. It went off great. And then it just they're like, okay, this is your thing. Let's start growing it. And it's grown into this um, just circus. of Like we do a big parade walk in. And this year we did a theme. Um, and we're bringing it. We this brought, sounds like we so much the, fun, dude. dude absolutely. Yeah, we, we we branded it the pool situation. We brought it to Las Vegas and sold out three of their nightclubs with the pool Jeez. situation. And um, we'll bring it back to Vegas. We did it at CMA Fest. So it's kind of like it's come back to the States and become one of our staple events now. How many nights do, you, do y'all do down there? Um, it's it's a four-night festival. Cool. And then they'll have pool parties every day. Yeah. Um, that's dang, awesome, that sounds man. Fun. That's it's a lot of fun. I always encourage anybody that, especially you know, songwriters, anybody that's in the creative community, go down there. Like, yeah, there's there's plenty of room, at, you know, to 
to get everybody in and just see it. You know, it's it's yeah. it's always crappy weather here, anyways. Yeah, yeah. And uh, man, it's great to get down there and just mingle. You were so many artists. You were sixteen artists. Like, yeah. Why would you not be down there mingling? Right, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So you're on what sixth studio album with Kill the Cowboy? I think so. Yeah, well, I think it's six. Yeah. When wow. uh, when did that out. come? When did Kill the Cowboy come out? It came out uh, September this this past year. Okay. Twenty three. Okay. Um, and I'm still loving it. You know, yeah. I'm still getting better at the process. Yeah. That's what I think. I'm having so much fun doing is like you start out and uh, as all of us do, you're like you've recorded songs, but then you get into you know how we used to do it. You know. You, Oh, you know, we're cutting with eight guys and you got this producer and you feel like you're running from the cops trying to make yeah. what's going to be, you know, what's your life and career hang on yeah. your first album. For sure. You don't know no pressure. To, no pressure. Yeah. You don't know how to communicate to these guys. Right. Like, you, you know, I mean, all these guys, like I've read their names on track lists your you know, oh, whole man. life. And they're playing all my favorite records. And now he's sitting there and like, okay, I don't like what he's playing, but I'm not going to tell him. Right. You know? I'm, yeah. No, I know exactly. But what now you're I am going to tell him. Yeah. You know, like we have, I have like, the confidence and the rapport now with with musicians and work with them for so long that um I, I feel comfortable in the studio now and it's yeah. it's a lot more fun and I, i've i've learned how i like to make music and and how i'm loving it right now we cut with um a smaller band you get the bare, bare bones of it and then we'll just take it back to the studio and and um slowly chip away at it and try yep. to make each song unique yeah and and um been around doing it long enough to to see that you know the pendulum of, of country music is constantly swinging. Sure, man. And, um, luckily, I've been able to hang on to it and, yeah. and not get bucked off. Um, and, and we've got to, you know, make a lot of cool music and 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 get to make some very traditional music and very, you know, kind of genre pushing forward. Mm -hmm. Thinking music too, and and I've had fun doing all that. You know, growing up, um, being a rock fan and getting to make some more rock and country is cool. And and growing up and being a you know, George Strait's my hero. So get wow. to do all of that. I think Ben's George Strait Jr.'s a vibe, dude. Thank you. Yeah, a, yeah, thank you. That was a just a fun tip of the hat of like, how can I how can I get my my hero on an album and, and yeah. do it that way? Yeah. So, yeah. You know, I went to the George show um in no it was in November of last year. Was that him at Stapleton? Was that the thing? No, uh no, this was a two night only at uh at Dickie's in Fort Worth. Gotcha. And I was like, man, I to get to see straight in Fort Worth, like yeah. Yeah, get straight, and then matter. like go down the street and two step Billy Bob's. That sounds like a great night. So I flew down there and did that. And um, I was sitting there, and before Straight comes on, they played you know thirty or forty minutes of of house music, but it was all song, all country songs that had mentioned George Strait. Dang, in the lyrics. Dang, it was really cool. How how, how long was it? It was like thirty or forty minutes. Yeah, right? wow, but every yeah. song had mentioned George Strait in the lyrics. That's awesome. I mean, and uh, you could probably do 30 or 40 minutes out of my catalog with every song. <laughs> yeah, right. no, no doubt. Uh, no. I mean, it, that, it was pretty cool, though. Like, as you know, I'm sitting there as a songwriter, like, wow. And they're all, most of them are song, like hits. For sure. Yeah. It just shows you the the magnitude of his success and his brand. So you're hitting the road on Kill the Cowboy tour. Mm. When's that When's that starting? Yeah, that kicks off actually at the Rhyme. It'll be our first time to. Oh, cool. To headline the Ryman um, April 2nd. Oh, yeah. And uh, who you got with you? I've got, I'm taking out a buddy. His name's Skis. I don't know if y'all have heard of him. Skis. Yeah. I want to know this guy. <laughs> yeah. He's he's a lot of fun. He's like a chameleon, man. He does, he's, uh, I don't know. He's got like this arm, I guess he, he pretty much RB based, but he's a big country fan. And he also does collabs with like top 40 artists and, oh, wow. um, um, you know, like in the rap scene a little bit. And he's just like, it, we met honestly just hanging out at a bar hmm. and uh i started coming across his name and liking what he was doing and i'm like man what can we do that's a little different you know sure, and, yeah. and as artists like if you're gonna do a tour with somebody you want to love their music and, and yeah. love who they are and i love him as a person and i love his music i'm like hell let's see if he, no way he's gonna say yes to this and he's like, dude, I'm a thousand percent in. Let's go. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, wow. Is it him and a guitar? Is it his band? Is he got a band? No, he's, he he's gonna. Yeah. So I think you know, and it, like, he hasn't toured a whole lot. Yeah. Um. And in in the past, he's just kind of in that world. You just throw the throw the DJ a thumb drive or whatever and do Absolutely. your thing. But he's bringing a band out with us. Sick. So it'd be cool to you know see those songs, but um, it, you know, and in, in that interpretation. So we'll see how it goes. I know it's kind of a big unknown. Um, <laughs> you know, it's not like yeah. oh, it's a country artist with the band. Like, yeah. I don't know what he's going to do. It's just kind of fun. You got to collaborate with Jelly Roll on this latest yeah. thing, with Chevrolet. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
how's that how's that working with him man? oh it's really cool man i mean he's you know he's a great energy i don't know dude. if you guys have, have got to spend a lot of time with jelly yeah i don't know him personally but I, i've dude what just just the the fact that he went up to washington and and, and wasn't that awesome dude, man, that was so awesome. i got chill bumps right now thinking about that man yeah and and him fighting for you know for for that and and it was just really cool to watch and really cool it is to, he's got a lot see. more in the pipeline of, of good that he's doing i know um actually on the drive-in today i was talking to a buddy that that's um you know in on it working with it and and jelly's just you know with his background and and i think he has i know he has a lot more experience than i do um i go to the bluebird cafe and think i'm in danger when i moved to nashville <laughs> right that dude's in antioch running the streets so, <laughs> yeah, so like he knows he knows what's out there yeah. in, a, in a lot uh, uh just a demographic that sure. I, i'm not aware of you know I mean, and me, a lot yeah, of, me so, neither yeah. in country music and that's what i got asked the other day like what's he bring to country music? He brings that to country music. Dude, he brings like, that walk of life and like, yeah, um, the street smarts and knowing how that works and what they need to hear. That's a, what he brings to country music. A voice for those people, man. A that voice that, for that those haven't people. really uh, that voice hasn't been around. Not not, not at this. Yeah, not yeah. at scale like this. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And and that's what I think he's bringing, and, yeah. and that's why it's a rocket ship ride. No this doubt. this whole collab started before the rocket ship ride happened. It, it started before he knew he wanted to even try to make a country album, or if that's what we want to call it, right. Um, You're right, and it, and it started with my producer Zach Crowell, um, and Jelly worked forever ago. Zach w grew up in Nashville, and mm. he was making like all the street beats for all the rappers oh, in Nashville. Wow. Cool, and um, he and Jelly had worked together and known each other through that for years. And and uh, 2020, 2021, when when you know we were just stuck in Nashville, yeah. Um, Jelly and Zach reconnected, and and we had noticed Zach and I had noticed like, man, Jelly's like. He's got a connection with his fans. If you look at his back then, if you were looking at his post, mm. like the interactions were through the roof. Yeah. Really, just having a conversation with him, man. Just where like, to him. yeah, just the his reach and like, just his fan base. If he would post something, we're like, boom, boom. and all mm -hmm. involved. And where like anybody else was posting because that's all we were doing. Was like, right. yeah, hey, come hang on my basement tonight. <laughs> yeah, you know, like we're doing our thing. But Jelly was like, <laughs> crate going crazy, and we noticed it. Yeah. And so Zach's like, man, let me reach out to see what you know, see what he, see if he can, you know, enlighten us or whatever. Yeah. And he, they got to talking and like, man, let's start making music together. Let's screw around and see what happens. And so Zach and I are working, and he starts working with Jelly, and like we got start talking about collabs. And Chevrolet came across, and it's like, man, this thing, yeah. is, it, you know, it's a melody that's been around for decades, right? And it's been performed by multiple artists already. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity to continue this legacy on, sure, with a with a new country lyric on it. Um, and, and, uh, Jelly has one of the most soulful voices in the genre yeah. at this point. Um, let's see if he'll do it. Yeah. He was all in. So yeah, it's just, you know, one of those lucky timing things. I knew Jelly was, was, we, me and Jordan were, I don't know if it was Halloween or Christmas or something, but we, there's this little farm that has like a pet and zoo close to our house mm -hmm. and you can take the kids and. And we were leaving, and there was like a group of kids over here playing with sticks and hitting the tree. And we we walked by them, and they were going, "I only talk to God when I need it." And I was like, "Okay, man, this is gonna work. Dude. Yeah, this this right. guy's gonna work." There was like seven kids singing the whole course of that song. I just, beating that tree, beating that tree, yeah, with his, <laughs> just stabbing with those sword sticks. For me, man, I just love how how grateful he he seems, you know, and and he's uh, you know, he's well spoken and. And it just seems like he's he's really enjoying his moment, man. And I I, yeah. I love to see that, especially in, in using that platform in that moment to 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 help, you know, the people that he cares about and, and where he comes from. I just I don't know. I, I, I like I like his stance. Yeah, he doesn't have to do it, right? Right. I mean, Does not of, have to do a lot it. of artists right. that are that yeah. are global superstars that you know stay in the shadows, and and that's great. Some people don't yeah. don't want to spend their off days. Talking to politicians in DC sure, to try to help some dude. absolutely, and man. we're glad Jelly does. Yeah, you can see his heart through that. Yeah, yeah, you can see where he's at. Oh yeah. shoot, it's probably time, isn't it? Uh oh. What you got here? Well, we um, Reed's supposed to be talking about something. I'm supposed to interrupt him. I'm, I'm just gonna let you do and it then. Say, uh, I'm sure that was important. What you were trying to say But it's that time of the show For the one that got away Oh, okay. like that, yeah. You like that, DL? Yeah. I didn't know where It kind of came out of nowhere oh, I'm not sure where we were going, going. Yeah, yeah. No, I did. 
<laughs> it catches every lip layer. Just like, oh. Usually I try to interrupt him, but it's kind of hard when it's so quiet and I'm like, you know. I just freaked out like, am I going to have to put a line no, in here? Like, no, oh, no, no, no. I mean, you can't be once. We can co ride it. We'll go back yeah, to coffee. Was, I think yeah. like I'm down to here on this cup. And we can start working going. on that next record if you want to. <laughs> Dude, I'm ready. Um, Seriously, so, so yeah, we, we do uh, we do this thing called the one that got away, and uh, and we ask every guest that we have um, in your life if it could be a deer, it could be a fish, it could be a song, it could be a huh. girl. What uh, what's the first thing? What's the story that comes to your mind when we say oh, man. DL? I'm gonna start calling you DL if that's cool. Please do, everybody. DL, knows. what's the uh, <laughs> what's the one that got away for you? I mean, I don't think girl's the right answer. There's a bunch of those, but um <laughs> have you ever had deer season interrupt uh, a relationship? Oh man. So how many, how many girlfriends have you broken up with or have broken up with you because of deer season? Well, I just at this point I don't I don't allow that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I smart, can't I'm smart, man. Yeah, I just I can't imagine having to say no to hunting opportunity right now because I need to go home and I feel. entertain something. Mm, um, it's tough. That mm. seems so shallow, but it's where I'm at. It's right tough. Now. It's, not, um, it's, not, it's not so shallow. Rod jumps. I would, you know, there's okay. I will try to make this quick. I don't want to like drown everybody in a long hunt story, but Dude, go for it. What, so, this is what this is for. Yeah, drown so, us, please. So I have this, and, and this is still a heartbreaker. We can, uh, this is just another layer to it. So this is a, a Turkey that got away and now a farm that got away. Oh, that's oh. cool too. There's this farm um, in Normandy, Tennessee, which is right outside of Tullahoma there where I grew up. And it was a permission farm. And it was, one a, of my, it was a, a permission farm. Oh, oh, permission. I thought you said like per- persimmon. I, yeah, persimmon. I, was, I, was I was like, like dude, you got to have that. Dude. <laughs> yeah, they so, love persimmon. So, so my, just through my dad, like at this, this uh, gentleman had, you know, this farm. And it was a beautiful farm. It overlooked uh, Normandy Lake. And it had a bunch of turkeys on it. And so me and my high school buddy that we used to have the camo camcorder, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we're hunting this farm year after year and, and had some incredible hunts. Well, we start, we get this gobbler that we've been after for a long time and we can't ever get him off of uh, this TVA hill. He always hangs up over there. So we're like, hey, today, let's just get aggressive on him. So like it was. Got to get aggressive. Got to get world, aggressive dude. in this world. Yeah, we. uh we had something hang up on the the west side of the farm. We come back to this guy. Well, let's go try him because he always hung out over here. And like, let's just get aggressive. And I don't know if y'all remember the slate calls, Old Yeller. By yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. At the time, it was like what all the turkeys were reacting to. And so I had that. I forget what he had. He had another slate. And um, he starts hitting. And so we're like, all right, let's just have a like a big cut and fight, you know. And we just went hard, hard, hard. Well, he starts coming. Mm-hmm. And so – how we're sitting we're across this creek and uh just strip a pasture it's probably 30 yards it's not far but there's a there's an old fence and a creek so he's got to come down the hill cross a creek and a fence cross a creek cross a fence and then another creek but if he gets to the fence he's within 30 okay so i'm like shoot we'll pop him through this fence yeah money's yeah money time and uh so we get him down, and this sucker pops out of this creek bottom and he has two ropes Mm. i'm talking big you can see him and this is the first time we had seen him, not knowing he had two giant double beards, you know. <laughs> oh gosh. Boom. I smoke him. Um, drop him. We start celebrating. No, man. Look back, no. and this joker pops up no. and starts running. But he's like oh, half man. out of Wobbling. it. No. <laughs> boom. And co- my, my uh buddy Cody at the time, boom, boom, boom. He has yeah, you let her eat. fired at him. Yeah, yeah, you let her anything eat you got. Nothing. So we jump the fence, take off running, he's headed back up his hill. And there's like cuts through this field and this brush. And he's like popping in and out, trying to reload, oh. gets away, never find, look for days for him, never find. Him. Really? So that would be the one that got away. And then years later, the farm um, gets away from us. Mm. And it's like, that's a, now, I, you know, every time I go home, I pass it. I'm like, damn. Because ah. I've never killed another double beard. Yeah. Um, Have we killed double beards? I don't know that. I, I, dude, I've killed a, a triple bearded goblin Jake one time. Yeah. That I, I couldn't see, but yeah. He, he I've awesome. seen like, you know, you get a beard and like a couple little minis. Yeah. yeah this yeah. sucker had like, like two ponytails. Two tens. Two, two tens. Yeah. yeah. And of course, awesome. that's the one that falls over and then decides that he's that's not because like off. i've heard of of deer i mean i've shot a deer uh plenty of deer that have f- i've watched fall get up take off never found them i've never heard of somebody dropping a turkey the turkey jumping back up running off and not yeah. find them it yeah, happens, that's wild man. that def- it definitely happens we killed double beards last year now that i remember it but they were the little sprigs like you're talking right about, not the big well the ones we kill in your place mm-hmm. yeah i was able to get uh let's talk some turkeys real quick yeah, yeah i was able to go. get you know in, in 2021 we weren't touring um 
I was, I was like, you know what? If I'm ever going to get a chance to do the Grand Slam, let's go. And uh, it about killed me. Really? Even not touring, it about killed us. You're going was, you're, uh, Grand Slam within a year. Within a year. So yeah, yeah, within yeah. a season, yeah. So Osceola is where we started, of course, in Florida. And, man, that was tough hunting down there. I haven't, that's hunting. the only – that, that that might be the only thing in America, like continental. Hunt Osceola's? We haven't hunted. Yeah. We haven't hunted Osceola's. Take your mosquito spray mm. and thermocells and everything you can think of. It opens early. That's like the it's, first. You know, think about Florida. Like they're right on the Ever- Everglades where yeah. those birds are. You yeah. know, because you get easterns once you get north of that. Mm-hmm. So we're down there in the Everglades. It's hot, but like not only mosquitoes that kill you down there. You've got snakes, gators, panthers. Mm. Our last morning we go out there and there's a Panthers. bear track. There's a bear track. <laughs> yeah, there's you definitely know? there's a lot of bears. You gotta worry about that. I stuff. didn't know that. Yeah, they're, all, they're all eating turkeys. So you're calling, you got decoys <laughs> beside you and you're calling like a turkey. And it's just so dumb to be down there doing that. It's so dumb. <laughs> I've seen a video of somebody sitting, I don't know, it might have been somebody we knew sitting there calling a turkey and the, just the on the this old roadbed, this two track, and this panther this black like, yeah, panther walks yeah, by. It's like, what? Bro, Dude, no, Florida's crazy, you. man. Florida is have wild. You guys, it's wild. Um, have y'all have y'all seen the Python Hunter. cowboy or yeah, whatever yeah, his name yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've him. seen him. Dude, check him out. I've got to go. I think I'm about to go on a hunt with him. It gets wild, dude. Python cowboy. You know, you can like. I don't want to do the Python thing. I'm good on that. <laughs> what I'm do gonna you let him do? do that. I want to do the the air rifle. Oh, uh, gotcha. Pest control. Yeah, on. man. What are they shooting iguanas or something yeah. out there? Yeah. All the invasive iguanas. Seems and then make fun. some boots out of them. Yeah, dude. They eat them. That too, would be man. mean, dude. They they eat eat iguana iguana boots. You wouldn't mean. eat an iguana? I'd try it, but I'm not gonna like yeah, you know, I ain't going to eat it. iguana. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's just probably frog. It's just a yeah. beefed up frog leg, probably. Yeah. I miss that, man. I haven't frog gigged in a long time. Y'all frog gig? Man, we don't have time for that shit. I know. Anymore, the, the only dude, time, to... the only time, look, we got a story about that. The only time I've ever been frog gigging was we were down in West Tennessee and went with you our buddy. You've been telling Matt Crot's story. Yeah. Yeah. I was in the boat. I was, what are you talking about? I was were you in the boat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the only it... time I've ever been frog gigging. <laughs> and we went down there and, and this dude's red, man. He's super red and he comes up strapped. He's got a 22 pistol. No, red is not even a good description for this guy. I mean, he <laughs> Beyond is red? the most wacko human in the world. <laughs> Just, you know that he guy wouldn't mind you saying that in your no he wouldn't mind he would love for me to say it. He, <laughs> he, he, he you got that guy in high school that like drives the giant truck and wears like the puka necklace oh, yeah. and like the flip flops and he's ah, just this that he's this guy right? oh, yeah. but he's he's a great he, he's a great fisherman he loves to hunt and and he's just a completely out of the box human like I, there's no way I could have him on this podcast because it would just turn into like yeah. aliens and insanity <laughs> before we ever got out of here. And he, but he's sneakily like a very good shot, a pretty good, good woodsman shot. too. Just all, just God, he's a woodsman around. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he lives in literally him. lives in it. Yeah, like and so he asked us to go frog gigging. Yeah, and so we pile in there. And are y'all using a gig or are you shooting them both? both. Uh, mostly gigging, but he has like a pistol on his mm. hip right it's like a six shooter 22 i can't make this up dude i can't make this up and i'm not one for like animals come after you because they generally don't man like even if you think one's coming after you it's probably not but that night on that lake a snake <laughs> comes out of. i the, was gonna ask you guys this actually dude it comes out of the bank and it's coming towards us and he's like man you see that snake coming towards us? i was like yeah i do i think maybe we need to back up and i God is my witness. Hey, wait, it, we're sitting there. This snake's coming towards us. I'm like, hey, man, I'm sitting in the front of the boat. I'm like, hey, man, you need you need to back up, bro. This thing's getting, and I mean, it's out, mouth open, coming at it. No, it sees us and literally goes mouth open. Yeah. And it's, and I think it was probably just trying to like intimidate us, but it goes mouth open and comes at the boat like this. And we're like, oh, whoa. and in, I mean, a split second, dude, you just feel the back of the boat rock. Crotch grabs a, a gig. Takes the gig over us, boom, left-handed, left the snake, gigs the snake here, holds it up into the thing. This snake's doing this gig. He's got, he, he, goes hit like, him, he hit him about halfway down the, so he's still got a foot going yeah. like this. Crush, this just flash like from, from, from and the this snake's, hip. The snake's head goes from the hip. Oh my, from the hip goes. And he's, dude, we're not on like level ground. This is a kayak or a canoe. Or yeah, it's a canoe. I mean, he's like su, and the thing goes. We were like, ah! and I was like, dude. I'll never, I mean, that's 20-something years That's ago. unbelievable. Best shot I've ever seen. Yeah, best shot I've ever have seen. Y'all, I wanna, have y'all ever heard? So I, I had a roommate in Nashville um, from, oh, shoot. 
It's about UT Martin. I forget what town it is. Anyways. Martin. Uh, no, no, you just said Martin. Martin. Yeah, yeah. Um, Linden or Union Trenton. City. Paris. Paris. Boom. Yes. Good job, Jones. And um, Jones, coming in. He said, obviously big duck hunting, a lot of swamps out there, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. He said that you can go out and they would do this and they would take a bunch of, you know, shot, you know, shells and you'd, you'd get a couple guys in each boat and you would shoot a snake and then for whatever reason, the vibration from that, more snakes would come at the boat. I and it was like zombie apocalypse. Is I that really? Is there any truth that, to this? That kind of happened that night. Honestly, we ended up killing like six or seven snakes. I That's don't true. think it's vibration. It may be. I what I've understood to be is a the musk. odor. Yeah, it's yeah, an yeah. odor that a uh, snake under some anxiety or whatever you call got it got it, and more come at it, and more come. Yeah, because I've I've definitely heard of people, especially. Cotton mouse. Now look, this is not hundred percent certain. This could be complete. That sounds so horse. Well, but if I, you've heard it, he's told me. But but yeah. probably yeah, there's likelihood that that. Yeah, that but we is also wrong. all thought that uh, what was Sinbad was a was a was, was he? Remember the Shazam, the Mandela Genie? thing? Oh, yeah, the, we all the, thought the Mandela Genie, effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we also thought to, Marilyn Sinbad. Manson took out. We also thought, thought Marilyn Manson pulled out two ribs. Remember? Sure. Nobody knows if that's true or not either. <laughs> I'm just saying. I I think it's true, but I I cannot be certain. They do emit an odor. They do emit an odor. Wait, says who? Google. This is according to. In distress, snakes do emit an odor. They emit an especially foul odor that's easy to trace. Does it attract? And the must can lead you to it and other snakes to it as well. There you there go. You go. That sounds pretty. Dude, nice job, I kind of yeah. tried to that was be close. smart on that. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, I mean, I, I think that would be like the scarier cousin of, you know, shooting silver carp or something. Have y'all done that? <laughs> in order to do that, though, you have to be in a highly snake infested area. Yeah. It's not snakes that get me, though. Spiders get me, dude. No, snakes, man. Dude, really? Snakes over spiders? Dude, snake. I, I feel like I'm going to die either by, by a rattlesnake or a grizzly attack. That's how I feel like yeah, I'm going to go. Which would be sick, but that's how grizzly I kind of feel be, like Grizzly would suck, but it'd be kind of cool to... Yeah, the dough. It'd be a cool story. The yeah, dude was, was out there no. doing it. You know? What are you... <laughs> what? Not, nothing about it would be kind of cool. I would much rather like grizzly than a shark. No. Because oh. like at least you could... Halfway appreciate it happening because you like yeah be like in I'm the, in ground, the moment like, you're like this, this, this in this, the ocean you can't see it and you're just you know drowning. drowning. Yeah. What are we talking? <laughs> what it's no. all possibility? Uh, yeah, we're all gonna go I one day. So, okay. so right. the better here's what's crazy the better possibility. I was thinking about this in Mexico last week. I'm sitting there. I'm chilling out, drinking, and I'm Does like it get sketchy it's, at all in it's, Mexico. Or oh, no? all the time, really. Okay. And it's windy, and I'm like, I get to thinking about sharks because I'm like, I ain't getting in the ocean today. That's so dumb. And then I start running the stats. I'm like, wait a second. Coconuts kill more people than anything, <laughs> any animal, I think, every year. Coconuts? I, I look up and I'm like, right I got to get out of here. Like, so I now start scouting all the coconut trees. <laughs> I can head back to my room immediately. Yeah, we're going to go down, jump in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, we've been down there so many years. We have like this, uh, we stay down the beach a ways and it's this compound of four homes. It's an incredible spot. But, then, you know, in between all the houses are coconut trees. I'm like trying to map out how I'll walk out to the... <laughs> Van to get because I'm like, you know, there's a better chance of dying from one of these suckers. Than I, I there get is. it, man. I, I mean, I don't hey, get it. I'm gonna say this this happened for a fact, and it was, I think, last year they were saying that where we vacationed in Florida, 30A Beach was the deadliest beach in the world at last year, like with, with waves coming and pulling people out. There's this oh, yeah. insane wow. undertow thing that was happening, a couple and shark they, attacks, and there were shark attacks, right? Yeah, so. I'm down there with my wife's family. Uh, you know, kids are screaming. It's like, dude, give me five minutes of myself, right? You just get, and before I know it, like, I'm pretty far. I mean, it's like chest high water, you know? So I'm like, I better get back in. It's a little sketch. So I start coming back, and I meet my other a, a brother-in-law of mine, and we're we're probably belly button, you know? So we're looking at, we're sitting out there, and I, I hear like a, commotion to down the beach i was close enough to the beach to hear like hey hey you know didn't think anything about it simultaneously i see the only way i know to describe it i can see it in my brain right now is like a lateral laying refrigerator except silver coming right here Ugh. and it goes it does the thing like this thing 
And I'm like, hey, Adam, do you? And he's like, back up, back up, back up. And I was like, so we just start kind of like squeegeeing back. And as we do, I was like, hey, man, like, I'm like, you saw what I, and and he was like, yes, get back. We got to get out. So we start, we start going back. And the people down the beach are like, did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? And I couldn't even talk, dude. <laughs> I mean, it was, I mean, I can see it right now in my brain. And, and and everybody's like, oh, it wasn't. And I'm like, dude, it, it might have been like some weird giant tarpon ma- or manta something. ray tarpon thing. That yeah. no, but people from the beach were seeing it and screaming down the beach like, hey, man. Probably a big hammerhead or something. I'm telling you, dude. I was like, I ain't even dipping my toe in that. I didn't even take a bath for two weeks, dude. I was I know, I, to death. I, I, that's one of those like. And now that I think about it, I used to love getting in the ocean and surfing. And mm. um, man, now I'm just no thanks, man. It's weird what I don't happens. know. Yeah. It's, what, it's weird. That's when, probably one of those like if if I've gotten if I've developed any sort of phobia through the years, it's got to be the ocean now. Which yeah. is so weird. It's, it's big. bizarre. But it's scary, it's big. dude. You don't know what's out there. It's it's like uh, Rogan calls it monster soup. Oh. It's like spot on. <laughs> you know, it's so weird. It's pretty great. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Like. We have no idea what's going on. No, dude, none. No, man. absolutely. I don't know what the stat is. Man, they taste good. Yeah. Oh, sharks do? No. Well, I don't know about sharks, but uh, I've had I a shark. Probably, you know, I don't at know some point, I've probably had a shark. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Hey, this is a yeah. It's yeah. probably shark, but <laughs> ocean uh, fish are ocean fish saltwater are, fish are better oh. than freshwater. Yeah, they're oh, awesome. no doubt, man. I what's your say. favorite freshwater fish to eat? I mean, I we have a we have a fish which is a cousin to a. Uh, Walla. Walla. I call it a sauger. Sauger, yeah. Man. I've caught a couple of those. I can't. I, I mean, that's that's number one for me. Right under that, though, is brim. I actually posted to our mm-hmm. thing the other day, like, hey, guess what this fish is? And it took forever for somebody to guess brim. It's like catfish, cro- oh, that's crop. Which I found Sakalai. interesting. Yeah. I, I, I was but, like, no, dude, that's brass. Obviously, golden brim. But the thing is, most people don't fillet their brim. They right. just spoon yeah. them down. And cook them whole like this. So I guess that's that's where it came from. Yeah, so we you get we, little fillets out. We fillet, chuck them up, yeah, fry, fry them up, up. Yeah, release the grease chips, on them. dude. Yep, my same. kids love them. Everybody loves those. You can't same. beat the good old fish fry. I'm um, just catfished out, dude. I've had so me too. I mean, I, I like it a couple times a year, but um, yeah, I, I would rather crappie or same. Is that you know, yours? Crappie is crappie your favorite? Yeah, but I'll tell you, like shockingly enough, you know, old hickory that. July, August, the stripe, little stripe getting jumps. Yeah. You can catch them every cast. Yeah. Oh, so I, much well, that's some the of white the bass. most fun fish dude, in there. It's so is. good. And they're not terrible fish, dude. If you soak them overnight, they're not bad. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I I did that. And, you know, I mean, you yeah. got to you gotta be careful with the bones and all. But yeah, if you soak them and then, like, I'll tell you, I cooked mine in a coconut oil mm-hmm. and it sweetened it up a little bit. Really? Phenomenal. Did you leave it in salt water overnight or how did yeah. you do it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. It was actually really good and it shocked me. Um, but we but, used to eat them all the time back home because they on the Tennessee River. It's like you're talking about, dude. We would they pile up in there. We go catch crawfish out of a creek and throw and just rip them in half, put tails on, put heads on, and dude, every cast, every you, cast. Just, you just throw it That's out there and slow roll it. Boom! I mean, you can catch a hundred in the afternoon. Oh, yeah, dude, fill five gallon buckets. Up. It's so much. Fun. That's yeah. what we did. We would literally fill just fill five gallon buckets up. And early, I mean, even catch pretty big one. I mean, that'd be two and a half. Mm. Two pounds. Probably. Yeah, we would we would leave Nashville when they would start running. We'd leave Nashville and go down there and go just spend a day doing it, man. And that's just, just so much fun. Yeah, yeah dude, that's, that's, that's fun. Some fun. We also eat bass. I know we're not supposed to, but we eat bass. I, I actually do. love bass. Too, we too. Man. <laughs> I know. No, I do too. Yeah. And, and the thing about like having that lake behind the house, the they said one thing about management is if you're trying to grow a trophy bass lake. Every bass you catch under fourteen inches, rip it out of there. Yep. So we're we're frying them up all the time, man, and, and they're great. No I shame was, in I was our about game. To ask that. No, no yeah. shame in As our you game. Should. No, not at all. <laughs> you got to do it. It was it was cool, you know, following. You know, I, we know Luke Bryan's an avid fisherman, but yep. following him trying to get his first double digit, you know, out of his out of his lake, oh, and yeah. he finally got. It. I think it was last year. Yeah, he, he did. Got you it. remember that post? He was holding that. That's a giant, dude. Big one. Yeah, that's a giant. Uh, he's you got fish it going down there. On. Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, no, I've been down there. I haven't fished it yet. Yeah, he's um, in, he's he's kind of close to us. That's kind of we're we're in that neck of the woods oh, down, cool. down south. Yeah. Um, Did we miss anything? Song? Yeah. What's your what's your favorite country song? What's your what's your if you've got one if you could listen to one song for the rest of your life? Country let's song. See, let's what? name some that have been named so he knows kind of the um, humbling kind. Uh, yeah. Did anybody do good old boys like me? I don't know. Uh, there's been just like the ones, you know. I would say, man. And I, we actually, 
I had a, a, a little bit of a selfish playlist last week and um, put yourself all over it in Mexico. No, <laughs> um, I, like, I want to play, play some songs that are my favorites. And, and I will say to answer that question and what made the set list is time marches on mm. TL dude. Tracy time marches on. I don't know. It's just, uh, and I'm still like, on. I've heard it a thousand times. I've sung it a thousand times. And like, true. it still makes me feel something. Yeah, man. And That's it, it, it forever will ring true on, at least America. Um, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah, man, every, that, like no that doubt. scenario is, is going to happen. I feel like in the in the 90s prime, TL was hard to touch, dude. He had some jams. You know what's bro. sneaky about him is like he had 18 number ones. Mm-hmm. Like, That's a lot. It's one of those concerts you go to um, and you're like, oh, that one. Yeah. Oh, that one. Yeah, these are oh, him. That one. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. I love him, man. Sisters wearing red. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's a dude, good one. you're legit as hell, man. Hey, thank hey, you guys. Will you on. come back, man? Please. Hell come yeah, back. yeah. Come do That'd it again, awesome, man. man. I, love I promise you, I'll have a lot more stories once we get through turkey season. What? Dude, dude, I, you're great, man. I think we. I'm just saying, there's going to be more to the pot. Like, that's why we love <laughs> oh, the hunt. Ain't no doubt. You know? I mean, <laughs> ain't no sit around and. And tell the story. Let's kill season. a turkey together. Best part man. of it. We'll love fun. to. Yeah, come, we'll love to, come yeah. down south. I would venture to say this is going to be the best podcast voice from some from a guest that we have. Dude, it's funny you say got that. A pro I'll voice over here. I'll go best podcast teeth. You got some good teeth. In these, <laughs> well, no doubt. What, what do you mean, jokers? voice, dude? Your voice is just like I, I, it was made to be in front of a microphone, man. Like, oh, okay. it's, it's, he didn't like, ask what about. What do you mean teeth? He knows he's got, <laughs> he got teeth, teeth, man. No he got some. I, I, I get I some giant teeth. I, no, they're not giant. They look great, dude. Are you kidding? God blessed you with a grill, bro. dude. It's a pain to eat with these things. No, it isn't. I, I end up with more <laughs> steak in my teeth than I do going down the hatch. <laughs> <laughs> they look good on you, son. They look Thank good you. on you. Just I, a little I, appetite. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, always have floss in my pocket. <laughs> same, same, my God, same, we fall, we're addicted. Uh, y'all, Dustin Lynch, man. Thanks for coming, hanging out with us. Anytime, um, boys. and thanks for hanging out in God's country. We'll see y'all next time. Mm-hmm.